And um, I was basically told that I was in a tragic car accident. And as a result of that car accident, um, I lost my sister, I lost my niece, and I lost my sight. Wow. Um, you lost your sister. And you lost your and niece. niece. And yeah. I lost my sight. Wow. And, and, and how long, uh, and I don't want to stop you, but how, uh, do when, when this, this not time done went by because you've been in the hospital. I was in a coma. For eight months and 45 days. Wow. Mm. And, and, and you don't know even know what caused the accident? Yeah, I know now. What was it? Um, there was a, the, the driver of that caused the accident had epilepsy and should not have been driving and had a seizure behind the wheel and lost control of the car and caused the five car pileup on the highway. Wow, for you to still a be A five there. car pileup. Mm -hmm. wow. So the cars are already piled up in front of you? I was the second car in the five car pileup. Okay. So you 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 lose your you now you 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 lose your the only one that you had. Yeah. At and, the time. And the thing about it is, when you're told something like that, when you're in a coma, you can't move, you can't respond, you can't do anything. Your body's been, you know what I'm saying? Not you know. So I had no way of responding. But you have to remember, internally, I'm the only family. Mm. So there was nobody to come and. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Identify so, the body, do nothing. Nothing. Take your time. Um, so, I, I, at the time, people always ask me what worse. I don't know what to say what was worse for me. Was the fact to find out that I lost them, lost my sight, or the fact that they were just burned and thrown away like they were trash. Wow. Um, so, a part of me died on that day. So when you learn, when you wake up eight months later and you hear this, they've already did through, you pretty they much they did not get it. They don't know where they're buried or put nothing. or nothing. Nope. And I spent two and a half years of going through rehabilitation therapy. I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn how to talk speech therapy. I could pay all this therapy out to go in. But <laughs> ironically, when it came, my son was six at this time. Um, by the time I was done with the therapy, my son was eight and a half. And they gave me nothing when it came to my vision but a card that I couldn't read. And i never forget um, when I showed up at the house and I couldn't even explain to my son why I couldn't even get from the card to my baby. Wow. And um, Who was taking care of his son during this two his years? His father. Okay, so he was still in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So from for the next um, seven years, I say that's the time where I lost myself. I, I didn't want to live. I thought my life was over. You blamed everybody? I blamed everybody. You definitely was, didn't have no... I can't no, imagine. That God thing was not I something didn't, you want to pray I didn't want to hear not one person tell me that they wanted to pray. I didn't want to hear it. I literally, I was in my room. I put myself in a prison. I stayed in my room. I didn't want to bathe. I didn't want to. I, for, I I didn't want to do nothing. I, I I allowed myself to be just a waste of space. But I say within that seven years, however, this lasted probably for about a good two months. I stayed in that room. I didn't want to do nothing. But after them two months, my son, I remember he coming in the room and he put his hand on my on my leg and he was like, "Mommy, get up. I could help you." Wow. Now, How old was he? He was, my son was eight and a half, eight, yeah. almost nine. So this is a cycle really for him too. Now, right. Let me tell, I tell everybody, my son is kids my hero. Do it. Kids always do it. My God gives you what you need. Mm -hmm. And my son is my hero. Because on that day, the only reason why I got it together was because I knew what it was like not to have a mom that was present. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted my son to feel that. Wow. Even though I say it was seven years that I lost myself, I'll explain to you why. Within that seven years, yes, his father was there, but it was something about when you're different now and you're not the breadwinner and you're made to feel like you're less than because you can't see. And I was made to feel like I was a burden and he was abusive. Oh, while, the father, while you was while Yes, you was blind? while I was blind. What did he, he do to you? He would do things like, you know, he was very, there was adult, he would cheat. 
He would come in smelling like other perfume. When I would say something, he would t- he would make fun of me. I would fall. He would say different things. Um, he was just nasty. <laughs> but was yeah. he that person before no. this accident? No. 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 He made me feel like I was like nothing now that I couldn't see. Mm. So it was just me and my baby. I, Me and my son, as I was learning how to get through life without sight, my son was growing right along with me. Within that seven years, I self-taught myself. I never had a cane, which is something that you use to get around. Mm-hmm. I self-taught myself with the help of my son how to label things, how to get around. But within that time, my kid's father got me pregnant, though. Wow. Again. Again. Okay. So he was still living in the house with you He was you still doing living in the house, cheating, doing whatever he wanted to do. But I was forced to learn this life because I had a baby growing inside of mm-hmm. me. That now I couldn't see nothing. So I was using all of these skills to learn how to get through my life now without sight. I learned how to cook again. I learned how to clean with my son. My son was balancing a checkbook. We, mm. we was doing it. <laughs> he got creative. We learned how to label bottles with rubber bands. We, we use uh, sticky, uh, like sticky uh, crazy glue mm-hmm. to label um, different um, with the diapers, different things. I was prepping myself. So he would know how to take care Correct. of this baby too. But let me ask you a question. How true is it that all your other um, senses heighten yes. when you start to lose one? It's very true. It's, it's very true. I tell people the smell one, that's a blessing and a curse, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was very true. But I had to tap into more of those. Thank God with cooking, I never measured when I cooked. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I always learned how to cook from scratch. So that wasn't that hard. Mm-hmm. You know, it was smelling, weighing, feeling things, have like things like that. And I successfully, I had my daughter. I was told I would never, ever see again. Um, I was the sole person that took care of my daughter. My son had to go to school. So your um, child's father, you he left the house yeah. at how long? Like you were pregnant at the time or mm-hmm. after you had the No, baby? he left a while before I even had my daughter. He would go off in his little escapades where he would disappear. Mm -hmm. So it was just me and my son, you know what I'm saying? And I had my daughter. He had come back around, you know, but I still was the person that was there taking care of my daughter. She was never harmed, nothing. I had her all the way when my daughter was two years old, when she went to a preschool um, and the people there, they were all from Venezuela. Um, They spoke Spanish to my daughter and they kept her. Um, my daughter, she never was harmed. She was very smart. She's been speaking Spanish um, in school. Um, I did home. I did everything. And then I found out about um, when my daughter was three. I found out about Baskin Palmer Eye Institute in Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay, which is one of the number one eye institutes in the U.S. So that is how I ended up in Florida mm-hmm. because um, Sunday care. There was a lady from a, my church that I was going to at the time. And she had researched and she told me about it. And it was just like a faith walk. I didn't know nobody in Florida, but you just got my kid's moved. father was originally from Florida. Okay, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he had family out there. All of his family was here. Okay. So that's how I originally came to Florida, started the journey. I started off in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, because mm-hmm. it was there. Baskin and Palmer was in Miami. Um. Let me, was, let me let me ask you a question. Just mm-hmm. go back for a second because we skipped over that part. Okay. But when you found out that you were pregnant, you found out you were pregnant with a girl. How was oh. your mental state? Because because I, I heard when you said she was not you know harmed, harmed. Mm-hmm. and for the main fact that you said that, I know there must have been you some protected. sort of fear yes. once you found out that you were pregnant with a yes. girl. That oh my god, how am I going to protect her? How am I going to make sure what happened to my mom and me mm-hmm. doesn't happen to her? Stuff like that. I was severely, severely. When I found out I was having a girl, it was a sense of anxiety that I had instantly, Mm -hmm. you know, because my thing was, I felt like, how can I give her something I never had? You know what I'm saying? That protection. I didn't need, I never had the protection. And then I didn't feel like I knew what it was like to even be a a lady, a young Mm -hmm. girl. I like, what was I going to teach her? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't ever have nobody to teach me the basics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or what if she wanted to do makeup? 
or what if she want you know that's not nothing I could teach you. It was easy for a boy because I've been I was a tomboy. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. I knew that, but it was something. But I just I was very anxious, you know. Mm-hmm. But I was trying my I I I just felt like I just wanted to <coughs> protect her from everything, and that's part of the reason why I stayed with their father their father because he had a family mm-hmm. he had the family i didn't have to give my kids mm-hmm. he came from a big family he had sisters he had aunts and i felt like i didn't care about taking whatever i had to take i wanted them to have what i didn't have wow so when you guys moved to florida it was better for the kids correct mm-hmm. and so um but from when you well, how old was you when you when, when you went blind when you when the car accident 28 happened? 28 and how old and so for seven years you don't look that old now mm. you know, you you glistening baby so so how how the heck did you i mean that don't seem logical you know what i mean how old is your son i'm trying to add my son up. is 20. okay Ooh. i got it now i done figured mm. it out now you was 24 yeah mm. yeah got you yeah got you. i am proud to say i'll be 43 in September. I already know how old you are now. i done figured it out i carried the one on you i carried the one i thank god i don't look like what i've been through hey, amen thank say. god so so okay so now you 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 end up having to try try to understand and learn again did you get a percentage of your sight back or can you see it all so that's the journey mm-hmm. so i went to baskin palmer eye institute in miami that started my journey that was in 2018 2018 okay so from 2018 to 2021 is very important okay so within those years that is when i learned about visual rehabilitation therapy so there are schools for the blind. There are literally schools you go to that teach you how to live your life without sight. Everything from learning Braille to using a computer that talks, which allowed me to go back to school and obtain two master's degrees while wow. being blind. Wow, that's great. It allowed me to be able to turn around and teach at Lighthouse of Central Florida, which is a school for the blind. I taught adults and children for three years. Wow. 2009, uh, 2008, 18, 19, 20, all the way up until right before the pandemic, a little bit over three years. And you said children too, so there's a lot of children out there's here who are blind. Correct. And they're the reason why I stopped feeling sorry for myself. Wow. Because I was able to see perfectly fine for years. I worked with kids who never have seen, mm. who were deaf and blind. Mm. And they had joy that was unspeakable Mm -hmm. and that humbled me and within that time of me teaching going back to school i was having eye operation after eye operation after eye operation i had 47 eye operations operations. they consisted of injections i have tubes in my eyes i've had cataract surgeries i've had pressure a total of 47 eye surgeries and five cornea transplants wow how stressing mentally very because when you it's painful they can't give you no medicine really really when you're having eye so surgeries. you feel everything you you're you're so-called sleep but some procedures you're you're numbed but you're awake mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying and the pain is excruciating after mm-hmm. the fact when you have a cornea transplant after you have it you can't move your head from right to left you got to stay completely still for those 24 hours and your eye is bandaged. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So within this time, I had a lot of accomplishments, a lot of surgeries, a lot of letdowns. Because every mm-hmm. time they took that bandage off, I had no sight. And they kept telling me, why you keep doing this? Why you keep doing it? Because I got faith. I was not going to accept that I, I didn't want to accept that I was never going to see. Is there a limit on how many surgeries you can do to your eyes? There was. What and I was at my limit. Oh, 46. I was at, no, the eye procedures, that didn't count. It was the cornea transplants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many can, how many You're only you? supposed to have three. I've okay. had five. five. Ooh. So, the, i never forget Dr. Lugo. Um, I wasn't going to try no more. I had gave up. I was like, you know what? 
within this time I had accomplished a lot because of the experience from losing my sight and the journey from having to teach myself things. I developed one of the only curriculums in which I was able to go mm-hmm. back and educate the birthing centers at hospitals on how to prepare moms who are blind and visually impaired. Mm. They use my curriculum to teach women breastfeeding, different methods. I was able to get my master's degrees. I was able to start my own businesses. I felt like I was able to share my story and I had shared my story and I had people like Lucille O'Neill brought to and I didn't know the power of my story. Mm -hmm. I had lost my physical sight, but my inner vision to me was, was shining. Right. So I was like, I'm good. I, I, I'm good. I'm all right. But um, I had got called and they had a cornea of a young, it was a young man who had passed away in an accident. And they asked me if I wanted to try one more time. <laughs> and I remember sitting down with my kids and um, my, my, my son was like, mom, you know, it's up to you. You know, we don't mind. You know, we don't mind as long as you you want it, you mm-hmm. know. And I looked at my and I turned to my daughter and she was like, Mama, you got faith is what God wants you to do. Wow. But one thing through all my struggles, my kids never knew I can't. They persevered in everything that they set out to do. Wow. And because I said, of you. Because and that made me proud. Mm-hmm. And so I tried one more time. One more time. And on the way to that hospital to that to to this day, I never forget. It, they was playing the song "Take Me to the King" mm-hmm. All right. by Tamla Man. Shout out to Tamla Yes, yeah, shout out to Tamla Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every word in that song was speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there, I, and I was prepared for the first. I, I it was like I was just had a release. I went into the OR. I knew everybody because of course I've been, been there so, so many much, times. Mm-hmm. you know. And I laid on that table, and my doctor. One thing you need to realize, my surgeon. One of my surgeons was an atheist mm. when I started with him. And today he a God-fearing Come man. Come on now. Wow. And he has tell you because of me, because he has never met somebody who has so much belief Come in on something now. that they couldn't see. And when I laid on that table and they did the procedure and I went through the 24 hours and we went back the next day and I told my friend, And I said, I want my kids. I wanted my kids there. And I was sitting in the chair. And um, and they was like, you ready? I said, I'm ready. I said, either way it go, I'm good. I said, because I walk by faith, not by sight. Come on now. (laughs) Come on now. Mm -hmm. And um, they took the bandage off. And um, I began to blink my eye. And I was blinking my eye. They said, kept blinking. I I blinked my eye. I counted seven times. And when I opened my eye that seven times, let me tell you something. I was never so happy to see the color pink on my baby. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you about God. See, God didn't give me 2020. He gave me tunnel vision in my right eye. He gave me enough vision in my eye that I could see my baby girl, who I never, ever seen. Mm-hmm. I never seen my daughter. Mm-hmm. And you know what that's like to Man. carry a girl. Man. Or a boy for nine months. Mm-hmm. And just imagine never, ever seeing your baby face. Man. Mm-hmm. So when I saw her face, I was happy for that much. And then when I could turn over and see my son that I hadn't seen yeah. since yes. he was six mm-hmm. years wow. old. Let me tell you something. Come on now. Right there on that day, I told, I said in front of them all, I will never, ever complain. Man. See, People don't understand. Sometimes when you're praying for something and you're asking for something, it don't always mean you're going to get it the way you want it, mm-hmm. but he give you exactly what you what need. You need. Mm-hmm. And this, the what I had was exactly enough for me to keep on going. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've been doing. So, I got out that chair, and I haven't never, never ever stopped back. telling people about the faith to the point that I named my company Fight. Mm-hmm. which is I an acronym that. and it stands for faith is getting her through because mm-hmm. that's all I ever had wow mm-hmm. faith is getting faith. her through yes Love faith it. is getting her through and I've dedicated my life to being able to empower through fight young girls and boys who are it don't matter if you grew up like me 
and you're going through something. But it's power in having faith. It's power in empowering them with the necessary resource and real stories. So when I hear people, when you said in the beginning about Melvin and Mark, you don't need, you need real authentic life stories. That's it. That's what reaches. Not these sugar-coated, cookie-cutter stories about, because everybody don't got them. Yeah, some people have great life, lives and don't have to be, go through what we go through, but everybody has a story. A story. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you know your word, look at the word. God didn't use the perfect people. Mm -mm. He used the thieves. He used the murderers. The prostitutes. They did, he used the prostitutes. They were some of the ones that did the most miraculous things. So when people look at me now and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not. Losing my sight was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. It took me to lose my physical sight to find my real vision. Man, mm -hmm. boy, I tell you, you know, Jesus would say things in the Bible like, you, because you say that you see, you're truly blind. Yes. He didn't use sight as the way that we use. He used it as the way that you just used it. In a way to where it was allegoric, it's, it symbolized the fact of because you think you this, you're not. And because you're not that, you're this. You know, and, and that's the part where if you think you, the Bible says if any man think himself to be wise, let him become yeah. a fool that he may be wise. You got to sometimes, you got to get out of yourself, get out of your own way. And the thing that you're explaining is the fact that your spirit has overcome your flesh. Yes. That's what you're saying. That you have basically learned how to tap into your spiritual realm mm -hmm. and overcome the things that physically may be holding you back. Yes. Because you know that that spirit, you say, I walk by faith, not, not by, by sight. sight. Yes. And that is a spiritual walk. That is not a physical walk. Yes. And a lot of times you people won't look at you and be able to understand that mm -hmm. because the natural minds cannot discern the things of the spirit. I'm going to get out of it because I get happy. But you see, I always say, I always say everything happens for a reason. Yes. That's really what I just boil everything down to because mm -hmm. a lot of times when people, you have other people who are going to go through losing sight or having a child that's born blind and, so, mm -hmm. and you can't explain to that child certain things, mm -hmm. but you can. Yes. You understand? Because yes. we human beings, not everybody, some people can actually sympathize or relate to somebody who, even if they haven't gone through something and they might receive it from that person, right. but the majority of people will not receive something from someone unless you've been through that, that you've yourself. Been through. How, how are you going to? How are you going to be able to tell me I can get through it if you've never walked a mile in my shoes? Exactly. How can, how can I tell you, like I, I explained in the beginning, I thought this was a death sentence when I mm -hmm. lost my sight. You want to know why? Because I had never seen somebody without sight doing anything. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just, you know, I never seen nobody doing anything extraordinary. I didn't know you can still go to school. I didn't know you could still work. I didn't know. I didn't know. And I, I didn't have anything to look at. I, I knew Ray Charles. I was about to say I, that. I knew, so you see, you I knew that. that out. But look how many decades <laughs> that back that is. That was a long is. time ago. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. That's why I, I do what I do now. Because of the young people that I work with that had low self-esteem. You know how many young girls I taught at the School for the Blind when I found out that they didn't even want to go to prom? Because mm -hmm. they, they felt like they were different or I'm not pretty enough. I'm blind. No, no, no. What, what are you talking about? We're not doing that. We, we, that's not what we're doing. I was never the heels, makeup type of girl. But I said, no, if I have to be the example, I'm going to show you guys what you can do. That's what led me to becoming the first legally blind model. Come That's on what led me to being Miss Blind Diva USA. That's what led me to becoming the ambassador for the visually impaired. That's what led me to becoming the first legally blind credible messenger. Wow. Now I have tons of emails from kids all over, mm -hmm. blind and sighted. I was about to say because it's not just a, a blind thing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's sighted too. I just, it makes me proud because they hear my story and I. I'm, I'm, I, you'll hear in a minute, the girls, I'm here today. I was more happy about coming. This was a blessing to do this 
this added to my great weekend. Come on now. I've been on tour. <laughs> I ain't even I hadn't even got sleep. But I was gonna show up for my girls today. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday I was proud to be able to stand and watch twelve phenomenal women, young women, graduate this mentoring program that I am a part of Man. because they have overcame tremendous obstacles, but they know their worth. They love the skin they're in now. Mm -hmm. They're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it's and I'm happy to know that it's somebody like me. I was somebody who was once told I was never going to be nothing. But excuse my friends, a slut and a murderer like my mama. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's what they told me. And you want to know what? Those same spectators is the ones who's looking at me right now. I know they watching. But look at me now. Man. It ain't what you say about me or call me is what I answer to. And I don't have to fight back with words. I fight with my actions and my work. But Man. you know, the hardest thing is our mental space. Yes. We fight against ourselves in a mental space. When you're talking about this, being happy in the skin that you're in, people don't understand that even some of these prettiest women that you yes. see on TV, social media, whatever, have confidence issues yes. on the inside. They think that they're ugly. Ugly. Yeah, fat, all sorts of stuff. But we look at some of these people and be like, "Oh my God, they're so beautiful." They don't have no problems in the world. You on it, right? Yeah. But it's all in our mind. Mm -hmm. So even when you were talking about being in a group home and being raised in foster care, and it was so strange because I was even reading up on um, Tiffany Haddish yeah. the other day because she talked about how she lived in a garbage bag even yep. though she was going through from home to home Hometown. she would never unpack that garbage bag because she knew she wasn't going to be there yep. very long and to be able to live like that she talked about when she went to prom because she has adult prom that she's doing now yep. with her foundation mm -hmm. to offer to people who have never been to prom because so talking to, to people even actors and actresses is like well i was working i never had the opportunity to yep. go to prom or people in group homes who feel Never like she's like I, I she bought a dress from a swap meet and it was like twenty five dollars back mm -hmm. in the days but you know it wasn't a dress that's worth nothing or look worth anything but she made it what it is but then just to offer that right now where people can really dress up and be a diva and that's feel what pretty I wanna, yes it you know what me I mean joy. that's the reason why she started her foundation yeah. to help people to feel you know happy, happy. again I and go even back a, a birthday party I never right. I never got a party. I never celebrated my birthday. I never blew out a candle. None of that. Your day should be recognized. Mm, and no. I take pride in mm -hmm. doing that. We're homes back in Orlando. I, I A birthday club, I bring a whole cake. I get cards. Mm -hmm. I, something as simple as that makes a difference. Who doesn't deserve and take for granted? Mm -hmm. People take for granted every day just, just for somebody to say happy birthday. Right. I want to hear about these pageants again. You know, <laughs> fly. I'm in this pageant. I'm in that pageant. I'm in blind pageant. I'm in, no, you don't need to break that down because okay. I, I, I really, I, I see you. You look nice. You Thank got, you. You got your thing on. The I'm, sash. I'm, I'm the sash. I think I'm going to try out for something. Miss 2022. I, need I got the yes. crown. I just don't have the sash. I don't have I'll them. make you a sash, Okay, baby. I got to win something first. <laughs> Maybe boss talk. I'm going to be the winner. Boss talk. The baddest, this the baddest podcast in, the, in the world. There you go. I'm claiming it. But I want to talk about the <laughs> yes. pageants just for a second. Like, Absolutely. Let's go back to the first one and how you entered it and what made you enter it. Okay. So Eyes Like Mine Incorporated, which is a grassroots organization based out of Newark, New Jersey, founded by Crystal Allen and Nikola Wright Prevo. They founded the very first pageant for blind and visually impaired women in the United States. Um, I was affiliated and introduced to them back in 2018. I started off on the planning committee, um, just helping them, planning the pageants, being um, there, um, recruiting girls and things like that. And last year, I finally made the decision to actually compete in the pageant, which was actually, <laughs> to be honest, it was something that... Um, I talked about it with my brother. It was because um, it was like something. He was like, you should do it. You should do it. Um, that was the one that I lost. And um, wow. I had made the decision. I was like, okay, I'm going I'm to go into the pageant. I'm going to do this. But like I said, I was never the you know that type. But I wanted to do it for what it represented. You know, this is not, it wasn't just, it's not just a beauty pageant. 
it highlights beauty, but it also highlights the accomplishments that you make in your professional as well as in your community engagement life. And so I started off in it. I met Dr. Ellen, who is Miss Ghana World. She was our pageant coach. Okay. And one of the requirements was to read Queen Latifah's book, Journey to the Crown. Mm. That book tremendously changed my life. It really did. And um, it helped me put a lot of things into perspective in my life. And it actually really resonated that I deserve this just as well as anybody else. Um, about literally a month before um, the actual pageant, day, like the actual hole where we went and competed and did everything is when I found out what happened with my brother and I dropped wow. out of the pageant. Wow. I never quit anything in my life, but um, I did on that day. So he told you to join mm -hmm. this pageant. So mm -hmm. he never he never showed any signs that he was going to do mm -mm. anything. Not and, to me. And do you think it was foul play? Um, I feel like my brother struggled with a lot and it was a lot of things he hid from me. Um, I don't because there was a letter that was written. Okay, he did write a letter. Yes, that I that we will explain. Um, I dropped out of the pageant and one remarkable thing about the eight women who were in this pageant, which were for all over the US. One was from Jamaica, uh, Philadelphia, California, Texas, Washington, all over, never knew me never met me and they were my the people I was competing with they reached out and poured into me mm. and they encouraged me wow and that meant a lot because I didn't know these ladies you and they know? knew what had happened and they knew what had happened and that showed the power of empowerment to me mm -hmm. and um I had went through all that and I received the belongings and I had read the it was a note and I read it and one thing it was thanking me for always um, being there to try uh, to show what, this, a different this way. This letter that your brother wrote. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And um, letting me know how much he appreciated me. And in the end, the letter ended with, go get that crown. Wow. And I remember crying because Whoa. I had quit. And you didn't I want quit. to. And I'm like, I literally called. I, I called it at that time. It was late at night and I was like, Crystal, is there any way um, I can still back, do it. Right. And she was like, it will be up to Dr. Ellen if she has time to interview you. You would say, we have to do a YouTube video where you do the video and highlight your independence and what you've done. I do community service. So literally, I woke my daughter up. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, which we were doing this YouTube video. And I literally, um, the Journey to the Crown book, I had to finish reading it. I literally got through it. I did everything before the sun shined the next morning. <laughs> and um, I waited by that phone for two days, and Dr. Ellen was able to fit me in. Wow. And I did my interview. Yep. And I, ma I made it to Newark, New Jersey. And the pageant was on the weekend of my birthday, September 29th wow. of last year. I met these ladies. When's your, what's your birthday? September 29th. That's my mama's birthday. <laughs> yes. And um, we had the, the whole, it's a real pageant. We had the evening gown competition, talent competition. Uh, we did a community service um, event we did. And we had judges from outside that judged the pageant. And I was, it was down to the last, the three, they picked the three finalists. Um, and I remember standing there and I did not know, I, I didn't know what was gonna happen because let me tell you, these were some phenomenal women that I competed against. So it could have been anybody. Any of them were deserving of this title. Mm -hmm. And when they called my name, <laughs> I literally, so we were escorted by the West Orange Fire Department, the mm -hmm. East Orange Fire Department of New York, New Jersey. So the whole time I was practicing how I was gonna fake fall so they could catch me. <laughs> <laughs> so but you really time, fell, probably. I really was about to fall. I said, this is for real, but Words can't explain to me how it felt um, when I heard my name and when Dr. Ellen, who I admire so much, and um, I'm sure she admires you. Yes, she does. And she put the crown on my head. And 
it meant so much to me because I feel like, you know, I was able to look up and I was Man. able to complete a promise, but I was also able to start a legacy, you know, for women in general, not just blind women, visually impaired women, for women in general, because as what they told me, I symbolize every bit of what women empowerment was. And for them to look at me like that, it meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. And it was a journey to get to this crown. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said. And in the book, as I read her book, I always tell people, you know, I came up with my own mantra. And I say that it's important. My journey to the crown, it's important for our women to remember no matter what you have. And I tell my girls, I just told them last night, you hold your head up high. And you know your worth and you stay strong and you never allow your crown to fall because we're all queens. Well, I can tell you right now, my little crown don't even feel right no more. You don't mess my <laughs> crown. You don't mess me over with, with all crown. of her. Yeah, yeah, I ain't got everything. nothing going. I don't know. If I, I'm going to keep my crown down on the bottom. But <laughs> let, let me just say this, though, for your for you, the joy you must have felt, even though your brother had passed away with everything that you guys have went through for him to be able to you know, write this letter to you even in the midst of his yes. his mental state. He had some issues going on because he still, he still had love. Yes. That had to be a hard deal for him to even do that. Yes. And write this letter to you. He he he, he loved you enough to say, I still care. Yes. And I want you to go get that crown. Yeah. And and then But he didn't want to leave her in limbo. He didn't want to leave That's her in limbo. That's the part. He, he loved leave you her in so limbo. much for him to even do that. Yes. That's a, a and and for what your family went through, you know, I know how people question this and question that, but man, for I know he went through a lot. Yeah. And and that's that's what I'm saying. That's why and I got to say this. There's no rehabilitation in locking somebody up no, in confined not. walls, man. No, it's not. Because if somebody could have counseled him or really gave him what he what he needed, he'd still be here, I believe. If he would have been diagnosed and treated, he wasn't treated for having. My brother was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenic in prison. If if the mental illness is real, yeah, and it's important, you know, we don't you don't know about this, but. I'm a very big advocate for mental health. Yeah. Because if it is properly diagnosed and if they are medi the medication and the proper counseling and treatments, they can at least have a chance because they battle with their mind. You know, and um more needs to be raised. It's it's not just a more white awareness. thing, a color thing. More awareness needs to be raised on mental health. More talk needs to be about it. We we didn't know what the, you don't hear about bipolar, paranoid, schizophrenic, um, manic depression. You don't hear about this growing up in the hood. You just think, oh, they bad. It, yeah. it wasn't, it was, it's not always just they're bad. These are hereditary conditions that are passed down. Did he have any kids? Um, yes. My, my brother, yes, they did. Even behind bars, my brother has um, a son, um, and the other one had a son, um, and my other brother has two i only one got killed so remember when i said there was a hit that was put out yeah on, or, you. Or on, me? The, on you family or in his hit. okay part of the reason why um we did the gloves up guns down in aberdeen maryland was as a tribute because i lost one of my nephews um due to that retaliation because they couldn't find Correct. you they went and found him yes wow and this and you knew and how did you know it was stem from that I was notified. Oh, they let okay. you know. Mm -hmm. he, so it's almost like we're going to let you know we got to take him out mm -hmm. because we can't get to you. Right. Uh, was that enough or are they still trying to get to you now? It, it's still, it's it's ongoing. But one thing about me, fear is not you got God. God. You know? Fear is not And I'm God. not ever going to be afraid to not go anywhere to continue to do what I'm called to do. Did they call you on the phone? Or how did they get the message? It was a message that was sent through someone that knows the situation. Me that's a neutral person. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and basically, he said that was in, in retaliation for what How does up. it feel to lose somebody you care about? Wow. And, and this thing happens. So when they put this hit out on you, this is... Ten, how many years later? Almost ten years. Almost my nephew ten, wasn't even, and these are innocent. What didn't have nothing? Didn't to know do with nothing it. about nothing. it. And basically, they don't care. Don't care. They don't wow. care. Wow. And no. and so, how did that make you feel? 
um, it, it's hurtful because how did you deal with it? I, I, I'm still dealing, to be honest. Yeah. And if I if I can be completely honest, you have I'm to. still dealing. I'm still dealing. So they put a hit out on your on on you for something your brothers did that stemmed to his son mm -hmm. is what happened. Mm -hmm. When you really think about what's going Correct. on. Correct. And so, and they still don't feel justice served because they yep. lost one of their loved ones. Correct, man. I'm, I, but then you, would, some people would look at it and would be would say, "Well, you should know what you're getting yourself into." I'm mm -hmm. not talking about the innocent bystander because that's association, you know. Mm -hmm. But the person who did, like your brother, who mm -hmm. did what he did, should people would say, "Well, he should have known what he was mm -hmm. getting his whole family yep. into." into it. Don't or just think that when you do something, it's gonna fall on you because it depends on who you do it to. Not gonna just come after you. They're gonna and come after the your message, whole family. Absolutely, and that's the message I stress when we're when we're going around speaking to the kids. Like when you're trying to live this lifestyle mm -hmm. and you want to be, you have to think about the effect. It's not just a decision that's gonna affect your life. Mm -hmm. it, it it's gonna trickle down. You know, it does. And and for you to go through everything you went through, they they knew you went blind. They knew mm -hmm. all this, but they was hoping that you would die. Oh, yeah. But you, since you didn't die, they were still trying to carry out their mission. Right. And and so here we are years later, and they still, and it's the devil mm -hmm. still. The, the, the spiritual warfare still is going on where one wants to get in your mind enough to kill you. Yeah. And not, that wasn't open that she would die because, okay, this is me from a movie standpoint. Oh, not, here we go. They're not uh, hoping that you would die because when I think about movies and I think about certain things, that is like, no, I don't want to die because I, I I'm not the one. Because I want yeah, to do it. Saying. You yeah. understand what I mean? They don't want this freak of nature to happen. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So, um, how say, all right, so how do you get out? I know you were in the GDs. How do you, do? do can you ever get out? I feel like um, for me, um, the people say you can never get out but that for me I feel like I'm free you know what I'm saying I that's not a life I live it's not a life I glorify any at all you know it's a part of me and and who I was at one point and now I just walk a whole different path you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying and that's what I choose to do and even though that was my brother that was his second murder he he had an attempted murder prior to that but the beauty of it is this the person who he had the first charge against, that was the person I stood on the stage with in Aberdeen, Maryland, and did the event with. And wow. I now call her my sister. Wow. wow. So that That's just goes through. to show you that I never condoned anything that was done. I don't condone any of it. So wait a minute, back up on that. I, I got to get that right. Mm -hmm. You stood on the stage mm -hmm. with the sister of uh, no, no, no. The with, actual my, my the brother, actual person. That my brother he, was charged. Uh, his very one of his his second charge. Oh, it was attempted murder on was her. Was an attempted murder on Angelique Newman. Okay, got it. And she's the founder of Cares Community Inc. Um, she was she had flatlined twice. Wow. And he got an attempted murder charge for her. Um, at the time, I was not. You know, I wasn't in the pitch. I didn't know the details, but I don't con. I was somebody who was abused and things like that. I don't condone that. You know, I reached out. They were together. They were involved mm -hmm. in a relationship. Correct. Okay. And um, something because of his mental illness and things like that, he mm -hmm. would, he was, he was into drugs as well. Mm -hmm. He, I'm um, drinking. Some things happen. I reached out to her. Um, I offered if, if there was anything I could do, if she needed any assistance, we began to talk. We, he, we shared our own hurt with one mm -hmm. another and we call each other sisters. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, God, won't he do it? And yes, he will. And she w it was important to me. So that meant a lot. And when we went there and we stood together on the stage, we told our story and we're working together. She was in a gang as well. We're working together now to show how you can be able to forgive. What gang was she in? She was in the same gang. Oh, she was a GD. Okay. But I got a question. So, okay, so with your brother, you said in, being in prison and he was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. At that point, when a person who went in there for murder and now you're diagnosed and they realize that's the reason why all of this, they don't 
can't take you back to court, change shit to mental illness and put you into a, you know, a psych ward or something that can really get you the help you need to get? It, How does that you, work? You would Maybe if you had the proper type attorney. of um, attorney or lawyer, but when you're... <laughs> When you're coming from, like they say, nothing and you're stuck with, my, my brother had a public defender that only knew his name when he showed up at the court. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times didn't even look over the case. You know what I'm saying? That comes along when you can afford a proper representation, maybe. But when you can and you're just stuck with what you're given, then no. Mm. Wow. I just want to say thank you for coming on the show, man. Um, I, I, I appreciate you so much. I'm, I want to get... I want to get to the point of what brought you to Dallas, Texas now. Yes. Uh, Natalie Clark is going to be joining us. Uh, would you Would you come? Would you come? <laughs> Natalie, how you doing today? Great. Yeah, turn yeah, yeah. Let that me turn, turn that mic around towards you now. Not, not, yeah, mm -hmm. yours. Oh, okay. turn, just turn it to you, yeah. We want to hear you loud and clear. Mm -hmm. I was talk one-on-one -on -one while the bosses talk. <laughs> yeah, this is where the bosses talk. Man, how you enjoying the show? You've been sitting back listening. Oh, I know her journey. She so shares so much with me. And I mean, when she shared with me, I was like, I have nothing to complain about. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Man. So you guys are here. Miss Natalie Clark. What? What's going on, man? You got you got some stuff going yourself trying to help some young ladies, right? Right. What's going on? Talk to me about um, your uh, foundation. I've been in education for 20 years and I've always mentored students um, within school districts that I've taught in. But during the pandemic, I really reflected on life is short. Instead of me sitting on my dreams and goals, I'm going to do some things on my own outside the school district because there's some different things that I can talk about and some different things that I can pour into these girls and to the youth in general that I can't do at the school. That's real. And so um, I just kind of started putting topics together, things that I wanted to be able to go over that's really important for the youth. Um, I didn't have a team. It was just me. But God gave me a vision. And the vision that God gave me was the word strong. Mm. Because I had been praying for, we can rely on a job, but we all have a purpose inside of us. And so uh, God kept showing me the word strong. And like Goddess, didn't know her anything about her at the time, I came up with, I am striving to reach our next generation. Mm. And so that's what STRONG stands for. And so I, like um, I just started planning and I just started preparing. And so um, I didn't know who was going to come on board, who was going to help, but I knew what God had put in my heart to do. And so I started the girls' mentorship. And as I started the girls mentorship, I started with, first of all, um, it's important if they have a mother or guardian or whoever, I need to be able to meet them because I wanted them to know where my heart was at, what I was set out to do, and I wanted them to be on board with it. And so I started with a mother-daughter team and um, I sat down and met with all the moms. And so, just back and back a little bit. I've never been on Facebook. Never had a desire to be on Facebook. I do a lot of things just in private because I just have a heart for people in general. And so um, last year at the beginning of the year, I wanted to be able to pour out into young kids to be able to go to college. Um, I grew up with my mother and father. I grew up in a stable home. Um, my, my father was a high school dropout and my mother was a teen mom, but growing up, I never felt like I was missing anything. Uh, whatever we wanted to do, I was very smart in school, but whatever we wanted to do, our parents pushed us, but my father was disabled and my father suffered from mental illness as well. Wow. And so... But my mother, I saw her work hard. I saw her go back to college when she had four children. And I saw her just keep pushing through. But unlike some of my classmates, there wasn't a college fund. There wasn't any money set aside for us to be able to go to school. But my mother, people in the community always told me, you're smart. There's money out there. You can do whatever you want to do. 
So I started the whole thing with I Am Strong. The first thing I did was me, myself, I wanted to work and put something together to give a student or students a scholarship for college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it all started. Mm. And so I had someone uh, that sponsored me and she encouraged me to get on Facebook. So that's how I got on Facebook. That's a really great tool. Yeah, so she was like, you'll be surprised who you meet. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's never about the likes. It's never about the comments. Networking. I'm pouring out my heart, but I'm networking. But really it's to, um, as I was told, show what you're doing in private because you never know who you're going to touch publicly. Exactly. Yeah, and, and uh, I get it, you know, and, and I, I, I definitely... The part about the likes, I kind of had an issue with that <laughs> because it's okay to get it. It's okay to get the likes. It's okay to get the appreciations as well as it's okay not to get it. You know what I mean? Right. But the fact of that you're in the race now, that people can see you, that people can be helped, people can be healed. I right. think that's very important. You know what I mean? Right. And if some likes come with it, we'll take those too. Right. But at Absolutely. the end of the day, a lot of times people going to bypass that kind of information. It ain't a lot of time for everybody. It's right. the likes that you get. It's the people that God put in your life. It's the yeses that he give you. A lot of times he tell you no through those dislikes. Amen. And that, those right. dislikes will save your life. That's right. I don't want you liking. I don't want your breath in front of me. Mm -hmm. If you That's ain't right. if you That's ain't right. got your heart right. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Or if I can't help you to get it right. right. If we ain't trying to go. How, look, I ain't going to say how can two walk except they be in agreement. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see what I'm saying? I can't walk with you if we ain't in agreement. Right. But Absolutely. at the end of the day, I'll walk a little piece with you to see where you're headed. Where you at it. I'm not definitely going to keep walking with you if you're going in the wrong direction than right. I'm going. So those not likes a lot of times are the way God shields you. Mm -hmm. Keep so those true. things from around you. That hedge of protection is those not liking. Right. Oh, you on Boss Talk 101 right All now. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but... It's true, though. It you, is. you don't want really everybody is. around you. And God don't want He want to protect you and make it to where you can usher in helping others who really, truly want to be helped. Right. right? Absolutely. You don't want to waste time. That's right. We won't get this time back today, as I told y'all before this interview started. We got to make it count. Mm. So I prayed about it. And God has really, truly showed up today. I thank God for y'all coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man. So, hey, man, so how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to get some help, some young girls trying to get help, trying to figure it out? Well, um, I had made a post, and uh, someone in Tampa, Florida, um, I don't even know who it is mm -hmm. to this day, Trina but Madness. saw the post and said, this lady, Natalie Clark, is doing some great work out in uh, Texas, and so reached out to her. I was new to Facebook, so she sent me a message I didn't respond. Uh, she emailed me. I didn't get time to respond before she called me. Hey. <laughs> and uh, I had about 10 minutes, uh, maybe 12 minutes when mm -hmm. the first call came through. And uh, she said, I'm the lady that's been trying to get in contact with you. God does things in threes. This is my third time reaching out to you. Mm. And I'm just following what God's put on my heart to do. I want to be a blessing to you. I love what you're doing. And we went on to talk. She shared her journey with me, and she said it was someone like you that I needed mm. when I was growing up. Wow. So the work that you're doing here in Texas is incredible. And so um, the topic that I had coming up was loving the skin I'm in hey. that I was going to do for the girls. And so we talked, and I said, do you ever come out to Texas? And she said, oh, yeah, I come out to Texas. And so... Um, she said, I'll be there in January. I said, oh, it's last minute. I said, but we'll catch each other at some point. And so I told her, she said, no, when's the date? And I said, January the 7th. I said, and my topic that day is loving the skin I'm in. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'll be there January 4th through 8th, and I'll be there on the 7th for you. Mm. So I had a whole private event with the girls and their families and other people in the community, and she was there. And she's been there ever since, showing up. She says, sis, I'm here. I want to pour into these girls. I needed this when I was young. This is my opportunity to be able to give back. And so my, my Facebook is Natalie Clark. I also have Facebook Strong Community Events. I'm on Instagram. And on Instagram, I'm Natalie um, underscore Clark 07. And you can uh, reach out to me that way. 
Uh, we pretty much collab on a lot of things. And so I'm all about celebrating the girls. Um, I've talked to them about building relationships. Everybody's not meant for you, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to celebrate the girls for uh, sticking with me um, through some really tough topics that I've talked to them about and just have a ceremony for them. And so, of course, um, I had a mother-daughter brunch in March, and Goddess was supposed to be here, but she had a health scare, and she didn't get to make it. And I didn't even flinch because three weeks before that, there's another uh, lady here in Dallas uh, that reached out to me, same thing. I saw a post that you did. Keep doing what you're doing. She was adopted. She said, I want to be able to give back. was a blessing to me. And so Goddess was like, I'm coming. I'll be there in May. And so last night we celebrated all of those girls hey. and their moms, had people in the community, and invited some other girls that their families are looking for them to be a part Amen. of it. How many so, people turned up? So um, this year we had 12. Amen. And so I want to keep it intimate. That's because right. Because there's a lot of things that I do with the girls and they're getting to be with me on a personal level. That's good. And so I don't want it to be over 20 girls. Okay. Uh, we meet in the Mansfield, Arlington area. Um, I have some uh, parents that drive as far as 40 minutes. Um for the girls to be a part of it. And so um, registration is open. My website is IamStrongLLC.com. And if you go to the mentorship tab, the link is there for registration. And it's a nine-month program. I do it long with school so that every month that they're in school, I am pouring into them and I'm doing something with those girls. And so... Um, this weekend, Goddess and I are going over the schedule um, because she's committed to I Am Strong, and she's going to be there uh, each month this upcoming year to be with the girls. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> extraordinary. Man, I tell you what, y'all y'all done blessed my day and don't even realize it, man, just to hear how you guys are. You guys are something else, man. Um, man, I tell you, Natalie, um, Man, keep doing a good job with them with them girls and, 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 and if you need me for anything, anything, just call me. I'm gonna give you my card and my number. Uh we can find a way to try to blast some things to help some people. Maybe they need some shoes, maybe they need something. And we are in a clothing store. You know, whatever I can do, that's the big deal for me. Let's try to help. And if it's somebody else, just reach out to me. And if you reach out to me, I'm gonna try to help. I might can't give you the everything, but I can mm -hmm. show do what give I can. Some. You know what Thank I mean? You. Thank and you. so just let me know if you see somebody that's needing something in need, reach out to me. That go for both of y'all. You know what I mean? Thank yes. you. And, and, that's and if what, I can, we can volunteer. We'll volunteer, we'll volunteer too. If you want us to come you. talk, because I got a story. And, and and this woman here got a story. Definitely. You know I would, what I mean? I would love We would love it. to have you at our conference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we know it's this. your birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be down there with y'all on my birthday. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> I'll come on my birthday. I don't trip. But I just want to say, um, you know, you, you guys are extraordinary, man. And, um. You know, I, I mean, I just say, man, keep going with what, you, what you're what doing. You know, um, um, you say that she taught you how to pray, right? Yes. Well, then, would you please say a prayer for us in this yes, podcast and everything that y'all have accomplished and the ladies that y'all going to touch going forward? Father God, I just want to thank you first and foremost for waking us up this morning, Father God. Thank you for life, health, and strength, Father God. Lord God, we know that we each are called for your divine purpose, Father God, to be used the way that you want us to be used, Father God. Amen. Lord God, I speak a special blessing right now, Father God, over this union. These two individuals, Father God, first and foremost, continue to build them up, Father God. Continue to give them the strength to reach the people that they need to reach, Father God. Elevate their family, elevate their business, elevate their show, Father God, to continue to move and reach beyond anything they could ever expect father god yes. i ask for a blessing of tenfold father god that exceeds exceedingly and abundantly anything that they could ever ask for father god lord god i ask that you continue to strengthen myself father god continue to strengthen natalie father god to continue to be used as vessels father god to be examples for these young women father god to teach them the value of their words father god and how to be virtuous women in you father god Lord God, continue to bind us all together, Father God, in the true definition of team, Father God, because together everyone achieves more. 
no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Ooh. Father God. Lord God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father God. Amen. And help us to never lean to our own understanding, Father God. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Listen, man, amen. I, I had amen. to get you to pray for me because if you in a in a coma for eight months, uh, you know, all kind of stuff, going through what you done been through, I, I had to have that prayer. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, cause I know, I know you know how to pray. Yes. Don't nobody know how to pray. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. and I just say thank you You're again. Welcome. How can people get a hold to you if they're trying to reach out and uh, get you to uh, a, a come to an event, or if they want to donate to your, your your cause? Because I know you guys, you know, you need money to do the yes. things that you do. Yes, we do. Um, I can be reached on Facebook. I can be found under my name. It is Goddess, G-O-D-D-E-S-T, T-H-R-A-I-L-K-I-L-L. -L -L. I am also available to be reached on my, by email, Goddess, G-O-D-D-E-S-T, 80 at gmail.com. You can follow me on my fan page, which is 2022 goddess johnson miss blind diva and on instagram under the real dot goddess g-o-d-d-e-s-t um, for any donations you can um, donate to me via at this time cash app under dollar sign j-o-v-a-n one seven one five I'm also a very impersonal person so you can reach me by phone at eight six three two seven two zero three nine zero and from the bottom of my heart i want to say thank you both very much for having me here you have blessed me as well i already know i bless you remember I already, all of that that's I a lot know. of information i already know, I already know. And every single one of them is different yeah. i'm like how you can keep up with all one of that one thing about this life queen that you memory. remember stuff at the drop of one time I, I, I gotta ask you one more thing before i let y'all be here melvin farmer uh i told them all credible uh, messengers what's going on with that movement and just break it down to us so we can understand what you guys are planning coming. definitely shout out to all of my credible messengers Melvin, Marv, Coach Ruben. Coach Ruben. Um, shout out to you all. Um, we are. We just finished our East Coast tour. We are going to be having our West Coast tour coming up starting July 1st through the 12th. You can find us on Facebook under Credible Messengers. Um, we are basically, we share real life stories and perspectives to be able to reach our youth preventing gun violence and gang violence utilizing the art of boxing and mixed martial arts as a way of fighting in a more disciplined way we have credible messengers all throughout the united states that come from extreme backgrounds and are using them in a positive way we have jacqueline montanez katherine jones barbara Miss Barbara Gaskins out of North Carolina. Um, charge it to my mind, not my heart, if I forgot your name. But um, definitely, we're on the move, you know, and that's what we're doing. Um, so look out for us. We got our West Coast tour coming up real soon, and we are doing some tremendous things in the lives of our youth. Yeah, I've seen you guys on a few a few different uh, videos and pictures. Yes. You guys were down there dealing with, what did, what, just give we me some were, details we on went the two out, stops y'all made. Yeah, of course. We were out in North Carolina with Congress. Um, she ran for Congress, um, Barbara Gaskins. We did an event out there where there will be starting a program, Gloves Up, Guns Down program out there. We also went to, um, like I spoke earlier, Aberdeen, Maryland, with the um, Department of Health. We did a partnership with Raising Awareness on Mental Health, a collaboration with them, and we did the whole Gloves Up, Guns Down presentation. We had some of our youth um, advisors out there in our um, men uh, mentees that are in the program demonstrating the boxing and mixed martial arts. We also got a chance to go out to Miami, met up with Muhammad Ali Jr., who is a credible messenger as well. Uh, we were out in Spanish Harlem with Hector Camacho Jr. Hey. Shout out to him, <laughs> a credible messenger. They renamed um, the street in Spanish Harlem after his father. Um, so that was a great experience to do out there. We visited um, the gym, Maestro Gym, I believe it um, was. Yeah, I've seen that. Yes, we met one of the oldest ghetto boys, I believe it was, out there. That was an amazing experience. Um, oh, my God. Also, shout out to Tanya in Miami. We were out there. She's doing some great work with the Young, young Lords out there, which is another group that does boxing and MMA. 
Um, so we were definitely all over. We got a chance to take some of the kids in the program who may have never been able to experience. We went to the Everglades. We made a stop there. They got to see alligators. Hey. Um, we got to really go. We went to Philly. We got to um, visit Rocky's, um, one of Rocky, um, the fighter house um, yeah. that was there. Um Beautiful. That was a great experience, and when they shot the movie Creed, we actually got an opportunity to go back there at that location, and we're going to be doing an actual Gloves Up, Guns Down oh, event wow. right there. Um, so that was absolutely <laughs> amazing. So, um, yeah, we Thank we, we so had much. a great East Coast tour, some great collaborations. Everywhere we went, they showed us love, and we were really, really honored to just be a blessing. Man. God. I know he's he trying to like see. She there. Yeah, he's trying to see how it went. I oh, already know. Yeah, we down for two days, and then we go to New York for the renaming of Benji, Big Bitch, somebody street. Do you get rest? Dang. Sometimes. Yes, she's <laughs> going to get rest. I do. I slept really good in my sister's house. Mm. I had some peaceful sleep, and, and then I'm asleep for my two days. You travel by yourself or you travel with somebody? I used to travel by myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't need no air, um, mm -mm. students. Uh -huh. no, I got no my cane and I use my apps. And I be I know these airport. I know Dallas Airport like the back of my hand. Orlando Airport like the back of my hand. New Jersey, those are You're ones I cool. frequent. And you can see, you can see mm -hmm. how much percentage. I have tunnel vision in my right eye only. I have no vision in my left right. and no peripheral. So tunnel vision mean like so, so if you take a ballpoint it. pen and take the end off of a pen and look through it, that's how much vision I have. So you can see some mm -hmm. more, a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. you probably can see how handsome I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that, that'll help your eyes right there now. So you can see far. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I can see, see that through that circle of vision, yeah. I can see crystal clear through well, that circle no, of vision. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I thank God for you, man. I love to, I, I love to put smiles on people's faces, yes. man. And I just want to say thank you guys for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, listen, man. I think, hey, listen. It's been another great segment. A Boss Talk 101. A Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we are. Right.